One penny is how much I'm selling these airplanes for. No reserve auction. You might ask why, and I'll say, because I may have accidentally bought a couple of airplanes and I don't have the money or the space to put them. Welcome to Jimmy's World. We'll be taking this and 40 other airplanes to the Bahamas May 9th through the 13th, and I want you to join us. Go to save3.10.com, get all the details there. No purchase necessary. And when you buy a t-shirt or an Elvis tag, every $5 gets you one entry to win. So go to the website, check out all the details there, and uh, let's, let's go to the Bahamas and have an awesome time together. I'll see you there. This is the Silver Bullet. It's a 1956 Cessna 310. It's got 240 horsepowers under each hood. It does 200 miles an hour while drinking a copious amount of fuel. About four years ago, this was put up on Facebook Marketplace and it was in pieces. One engine was off and in lots of pieces. This is like the whole thing. Yeah, so. Is there, the, no, there's no generator on it. No. So, do you have log books for this engine? I do. Clint got to it before I did. He spent about a year putting it back together and flew it a few times until his life got too busy. Then he reached out to me and said, hey, Jimmy, I've got this cool airplane. Do you want it? Of course I said, heck yes. Silas and I flew out to California and met him, spent a few days getting it back in the air. Can I get a clear prop? And then flew it 3,000 miles across the entire country from coast to coast. Brought it back here, updated it some more with some fancy avionics, flew it up to Oshkosh to show it off. Then it was used as a trainer to help some people get their multi-engine rating and flying us around to go project to project. And now it is a sad day because it's time for it to go to a new home. Oh, I love this airplane so much. That brings us to Cameron. This little Speed Demon does 230 miles an hour with 180 horsepower, four cylinder engine, only sucking down nine gallons an hour, which comes out to 30 miles to the gallon. Insane. Byron, the older gentleman that we got this from a few years ago, spent 8,000 hours building it. You can tell. That is cool. All the blueprints for all the parts. Oh, look at this. This is every step of the way. The lines on this, the spacing, everything is absolutely dialed in on this unit right here. Uh, it's, it's a, if I'm honest with you, it's a sad day and I don't wanna be making this video, but onward and upward. After six months in storage, let's pull her out and see how she runs. It's been in the cave. It's time to wake it up from hibernation. Yes, for all of you technical people, anytime it sits that long, we've already pre-oiled the engine. That means you take all the spark plugs out, you turn over a bunch so you get oil pressure to make sure everything is good to go. So you do not start an engine without any oil up in the movie parts area. We've already done that. Check the fuel. We just gotta see if this thing will fire up. Grizzly, how many tries do you think it's gonna be? I think we're going to get it on the first one. Yeah? Yeah. We got those new fine wire spark plugs in there. Thank you, Champion Arrow, because we got our fine wire spark plugs, which is nuts. It sounds funny for an airplane to have these special spark plugs, but they're legit good stuff. Lifetime type spark plugs in it. Let's see if they work now, huh? Let's go. I gotta turn the mags on. Clear prep.
success. We had, everything was working the way it was supposed to, what we expected. The only thing we had something on that engine over there that was not acting up, but otherwise this thing has never ran better. Love it. Yeah, this thing, it sounded good though. Love the sound of this thing so much. I got a call from these guys at Sparrowhawk. They said, we can polish the 310 in three days. And I said, I will gladly accept that challenge. They're here right now getting this thing to shine better than it's ever shined before. 24 hours a day they're going to be cranking on this thing to get it done in three days that is i don't my brain cannot comprehend that but hey sparrowhawk they got locations all over the country specific to aviations rvs and boats check them out if they can get this done they definitely deserve everyone's business because that is that's insane that's just nuts the guys got to work right away and by the next day they were making significant progress. I think we're safe right here. Don't look. I'm not Don't looking. Cheat. I'm not looking. Don't I'm not cheat. looking. You gotta save the surprise. Yeah, I can't look. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> they told me I'm not allowed over here. I can hear it happening behind me. This is Josh. He is uh, one of the owners of Sparrowhawk. You got a hold of me, sent me an email, and said, hey, we would love to uh, clean the airplane. Sparrowhawk. They're aviation, boat, marine specialties. He's an IA, AMP, which is certified mechanic, a pilot as well. He's hardcore aviation. You guys are a franchise and you're in what, 24 cities now? 24 cities nationwide. Okay. Uh, we, uh, most of our locations are ran and operated by AMPs, IAs, pilots, uh, people with extensive aviation backgrounds. Uh, and the ones who aren't, yeah, don't look. I know, the, I keep this like out of corner of my the eye. The ones that uh, aren't are top-notch detailers that I'd put them up with any other detailer in the country. We have some genuine artists within our, our team. What kind of airplane do you fly? So I have a T-41. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, so the, That's the, pretty cool. the military 172 on steroids. Yeah, yeah. it's got the, the bigger engine, the 182 yep. engine yeah, in it. Yeah, 360. Yeah. Six banger engine instead of four wow. cylinder. That's fancy. Variable pitch prop instead of fixed pitch. All that wow, okay. Yeah. He's, yeah, see, he knows what aviation, <laughs> we're in the right place. Yeah, that's how a lot of our teammates are. And that's really what separates us, I feel, from uh, a lot of other detailing companies out there is we're, a lot of us are genuinely aviators. We know aircraft through and through. So you don't have to worry and compromise on the integrity and what chemicals are being used and are they approved and safe. Because they're and, way different. Yes, there, there's some the, differences. The biggest thing that I've learned about airplanes and cars you, you can't use the same stuff on an airplane that you use on a car. Absolutely. We actually teach a class uh, with the Aviation Detailing Associations, which we're uh, founders of that. That's true, because you yeah. guys are making sure all the detailers Absolutely. are out. Absolutely. We're knowing setting the standard. Knowing what you do with aviation specifically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we, uh, we started that uh, about a year and a half ago. We started teaching classes where I can honestly say people from all over the world have flown into Houston, Texas, and uh, that's where we primarily hold the course, and we train detailers all over the world to a high aviation standard. If you guys need to get a hold of them, if you got an airplane, an RV, a boat, any of that stuff, how do they get a hold of you guys? So SparrowHawkMobileDetailing.com. Uh, that's our, our webpage. And we have it pretty easy uh, to find each location. You just go to uh, the directory. It's a map. It's got all our pinpoints all over the oh, United States. Oh, so you States. can like open up a, yeah. a map looking and thing. You and just you type in your zip code, pulls up the closest detailer. And uh, we actually have a couple of uh, crews that are designated for jobs that aren't in areas that we serve. Walk me through the different steps, because this, to polish this airplane, is not just grab a polisher and go. No. First, you had to, I mean, start from the beginning, from when it was super dirty all the way to the final thing, and what I have to do afterwards to keep it nice uh -huh. and shiny. So, we'll start with the beginning. We noticed that there were several spots of corrosion uh, that was starting to take place. You can see the corrosion spores or buds or whatever you want to say start to kind of form and so we actually had to go the sanding route yeah so we grabbed uh we started at about 800 grit we started at a, a little bit higher grit to where it's not so much uh having to polish out the heavier scratch marks so we started about 800 and we did a couple stages of that and then we went through with our uh 
Oh, you can't look. Don't look back. No, I'm not looking. I was hoping when I did that. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, ah, ah. <laughs> but, but then we go in with, uh, we have a good relationship with a company called uh, Buff Pro, and they have a drum buffer Dude, that does you, a phenomenal job. You're probably watching it on the B-roll or have seen it already, but that sucker is huge. It's like got a drum on it this big yeah. like that. And, and it mows through. It, it saves us That's a lot insane. of time. A lot of time. Of course, you have to be careful because with that kind of speed and that kind of torque, it you can mow down some rivet heads if you got a problem. <laughs> yeah. But but we know what we're doing. We're good, we're good. So, uh, but yeah, and then we go through that and then there's obviously some, uh, there's different grits of this polish or compound. Yeah. And so we just go through the stages of the compound. How many stages? Yeah. So right now I think we're sticking with, each one's different. So you think, okay, I'm gonna go to this aircraft because it's bright work, right? Bright work's bright work, that's not the case. Each canvas, if you want to call it that, has its own steps that it likes. So we do a test spot and off, based off that test spot, that gives us an idea of which route we go. So with this one, we're doing three different stages of compound. So it's like the worst. It's the it most. It was pretty work. rough. It was pretty <laughs> rough, man. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty rough. Is it? But but the yeah. before and after is gonna be phenomenal. Yes. That's the biggest thing. Is we're looking I for that wow factor. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm like dying. I'm dying to see. You should that take thing. a look. No, I'm just no, just teasing <laughs> like that, boy. And now the last stage is uh, by a company. So it's uh, Rupes. We're partnered Rupes? up with Rupes. Okay. Uh, they have a product, a machine that's called the Cyclo, and it's Cyclo? got it's a Cyclo. So okay. it has two arms that just rotate counter rotate and they get in there and we put flannel rags or towels if you want to call them uh on there and it really just pulls all the you, ever, you notice you want to I'm gonna show you no, no i'm not gonna show <laughs> you, you get the black ointment from from the the polishing oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah so that gets stuck in the pores and it, and it affects the finish oh. so that that flannel and that rotating heads just pull all that out to where you're left with wow. pristine mirror just finish. nothing but the, the, wow, okay. And it also, you know, lays it and, 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 and it has its own polishing as well. But the main thing is it's pulling all the, the that black ointment out of the pores oh, of the, okay. the aluminum. How do I make sure it stays clean and not get any dirty fingerprints and stuff like that? So the it? biggest thing, and it's so hard to do, I understand this is like impossible to get people to not do this. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. What, gloves it, it, only? Like, I mean, even then, it's For, like I'm gonna of, get grizzly white gloves. It, it's it's one of those things where as soon as you see fresh bright work, and even like whenever Ooh, we do, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the oils on your hand, you know, from your skin, it actually will etch into your bright work. Yeah, you can so see you our can't, sweat you stains can't, yeah, on exactly, that thing. You have a exactly. spot where our arm was sweaty, yep. we leaned it, and now it's white. And you can't wipe it off. And the only way to do it is to polish it off. So you got to stay on top of it anywhere from three to four months. You want to basically do just do a real light pass just to keep it up because if you start to let it go then you're it's that uphill battle of like trying this. to you know, <laughs> hey it's like whew, well, I'm not, this you know, one you hey it's all good it's yeah. all good We're, spare a heart yeah for real <laughs> give them lots of business <laughs> franchises are expanding so if you're interested in that hit them up they're in 24 cities already well let's let's head over to the lance air i can look at that one okay so i can look at that one so let's head over there Walk me through uh, the kind of the issue that we're running into and then the option that you came up with. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right, Lance Air, Lance Air. I love this airplane. By the way, I hate to sell it. It's a slick little airplane. But that's where we're at. So here's the deal. It is fast as lightning because apparently the paint is so thin on it. <laughs> that it's not weighing it down. In this scenario, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. On this particular aircraft, as I was cleaning it, I noticed there's uh, several spots where the paint is super thin to where you can actually start to see the primer that's underneath and the yeah. composite. And I don't want to risk uh, going burning through the paint. Yeah. Oh, look, fiberglass. Yeah, no, here. no. So yeah, uh, we have to audible a little bit on this game plan. So. Since it is an experimental class, because we always take, you know, uh, caution to certified aircraft to experimental, there's certain things you could do, not do. Uh, we have a coating that we are testing. Uh, okay. This will be one of the first applications for aviation use. Okay. So you're going to be one of the first to, to kind of get your hands it's on it. It's experimental. It's experimental, so we can do it. We, we can, can do, do it. it. If All they right. can wrap aircraft, which is crazy to me sometimes as an APIA, I can't wrap my head around uh -huh. some of those things. Get it? can't wrap here. Uh, uh, that, uh, I didn't even mean to, that's pretty good. But uh, it, it's a perfect uh, 
coating for this aircraft where you have oxidation and imperfections and things like that. Uh, it'll, it'll lay into the pores of the paint and everything like that and just add a good protective barrier and thickness and protection to your paint. So this is, um, it's called snake oil. Not making that up, it's actually called snake oil. So ta all right, walk, walk me through what we got going here. So snake oil is gonna be your liquid paint correction. So it's basically a cheaper alternative to a full-blown paint correction. It's going to fill in swirls, it's gonna give you gloss. So if you have a boat or you have a plane that's really oxidized and you don't wanna go for a full correction and a coating price and actually get it permanently fixed, this would be a temporary solution to a permanent problem. Um, so what this is gonna do, is gonna fill in all swirls, it's gonna give you more gloss, it's gonna make your oxidation look glossy, and it's looking for about a two year time frame is what we're thinking that it's gonna really? give. Really? Yes. Wow. Uh, this coating will have to do a decon, which we pull all the contaminants, maybe even chemicals, oils, things like that. Once we get that out, then we'll lay this coating down. It's gonna be a drastic difference. Oh, nice. It's gonna be very, 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 very glossy, protective. And a lot of these imperfections will actually be kind of hidden. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> We gotta find something to replace it. That's what we need to do. First, a huge shout out to Sparrowhawk. I did the math and they spent 150 man hours in three and a half days on this airplane. Please go go bless them, because uh, I mean, Don't I'm work super to get excited. The job done. I feel like I'm back on my wedding day, waiting to see my bride in her dress for the first time because my toes are all going like this in my shoes. I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna see a really cool airplane. Okay. That's fair. Okay. Can we get the truck out of the way yet? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Move, Move that van! van! Holy crap! Man! Jeez, that is... Like, it hurts my eyes. I can see my reflection. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Golly. That is... Super impressive. That is another level. This is the best shot, that three-quarter shot right there. It's It's words hard right now because it really is it just looks fantastic so i i want to touch it it's every every ounce of self-control i have not to just want to touch it i don't know why but they said don't you dare touch it because the oils off of our hands will leave a print on there and then you have to kind of buff it all off to get the handprint off but everything in me wants to just touch it so i don't that's not the same, honestly. No. Not the, I was expecting something more. But. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez, look at like, dude, you can like shave and look at that. <sighs> and then you go long arm. <laughs> look how long your arm gets that way. But then you got the dwarf thing going. <sighs> This is amazing! Wow! It's almost one of those optical illusions where you're looking through it because it's so reflective that it you can't, it just like disappears like a mirror. It's just crazy. Well Thank done. You. Thank well you. done, you guys. Thank you. Well done. There's a legit 25, 30 degree tif temperature difference from here to right there. Here, come here and stand. Stand right here. Oh, I can't yeah. see. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is so bright. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Let me introduce you to the guys that made it happen. Brandon, come on in. He came in all the way from Houston, Texas. Well done, sir. Well done. Dave, all the way in from Nashville, Tennessee. Good job, sir. And our local homeboy. We got Ryan right here in Lakeland, Florida. Well done, you guys. I cannot begin to tell you how impressed I am of the job you did. Thank you gentlemen so much for ever in your debt. You guys went above and beyond. So awesome. Thank you.
The silver bullet is not the silver bullet until we get the decal on the nose and nobody does it better than Jimmy. The hardest part is just staying out of his way because the man, he just moves fast like a ninja going around this thing. So he just says, Jimmy, stay, stay over there in that corner out of the way and then I can get this done. Yes, sir. That really is my favorite part is the bullet up front. It's like the World War II nose art. We just need to have like the, the girl on top going like this or something like that from World War II. I think that's that about, or the army guy with the big cigar coming out of his mouth, right. just going like that. that. That would be the other thing that you'd see on there. The bullet's back. The dude makes it look so easy. In like 15 seconds, he put that thing on there. I've tried to put on vinyl things on a car before. Turned out not as easy as this guy's making it look. So what he's doing now is popping all of the rivets on there to make sure no air gets trapped around that to then make a place where corrosion could start. So that level of detail, that's, that's why Jimmy is here. It's Jimmy's, Jimmy's world right here. That's what this is. And the, the stars go on this side, so the stripes go back, so it makes it look like you're carrying the flag this way and the wind is blowing it that way. And attention, and then fall out. Before I fly it up there tomorrow, and while it's super shiny, let's get Matt and take care of this. So that's Matt from Airspace Auctions. This is the first time I've ever auctioned an airplane, and so far it's been pretty smooth. All I did was called him up, said, hey, I've got these airplanes I wanna sell, and he's like, great, let's set a date, come out, he's gonna take pictures, he's gonna scan the logbooks, he's gonna do basically everything so that I don't have to answer a thousand emails and take a million pictures and be there. That's what he does. Should go quite well. So far, so good. So we're gonna spend the day with you today listing an airplane. We've already you know, done the initial stuff, had our conversations, decided on a reserve, which is no reserve in this airplane, by the way. Someone's One penny, so you better freaking bid. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and, and what an amazing airplane. Like I saw pictures of this before I got here, but I don't think I've ever seen a 310 this cool before in my entire life. Polished up. Yes, I know the American flag is backwards. The vinyl guy, whoever, he had his uh, brother or whatever printed out for him and he printed out the wrong direction. So yes, we're replacing that to make it correct. So the uh, flag goes that way because we never retreat. Let's talk about the whole process, you know, what happens after I gather all these photos and videos and the digital logs. We're gonna go back to my office we're gonna upload everything onto our server for its public data and everybody can go take a look at it. Uh, we're gonna write a nice summary sheet about the airplane. It's gonna have any good and the bad about the aircraft. If there's any like uh, crash history of an airplane or- No. Uh, no crash history in the history of- In like did. 75 years. The gear's never gone up on it? Not that I know Whoa. of. All through the logbooks that we have, I don't see any, any of that stuff in there. Well, that's pretty incredible, but we're gonna have everything out there for everyone to look at, everything you need to do to vet this airplane without ever coming to see it. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna publicize it in all the traditional publications like Trade of Plane, Barnstormers, Global, so on and so forth. Now, all that gets publicized about a month before the auction actually starts, is that right? Yeah, 30 to 60 days, Roughly? basically. Okay. Yeah, and the, during that publication period, we're also gonna do a bunch of social media. Believe it or not, we sell more airplanes through Facebook Marketplace than anywhere. In addition to that, we do Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. Every social media platform out there, we put this on. Then we do an internal mailer that goes out to about 7,000 people and an external mailer that goes out to an additional 20,000 people. Um, and during that publication period, I guarantee anybody that's looking for a beautiful polished 310 in the entire world is gonna know about it when it's over with. All right. And then after that publication period's over with, we enter into what is the auction period. It lasts for seven days. It's a live auction. Everyone can look at it as the number increases. And this number is going to start at a penny on this airplane. Yeah, it better <laughs> increase a lot. Yeah, I think it's going to increase a lot. It's a really nice airplane. And that goes on for a week. If you want to get in the bidding room, you need to put earnest money down on it. Uh, on this aircraft, I think we're going to request $3,000. And, and if, am I able to do that with a credit card or do I have to like wire you some money or how does that work? You can either do it with a credit card or you can wire us the funds. Okay. You just have to call up the office and then you have to sign a contract which comes through through DocuSign. Sign. But you're not keeping, like if I end up not being the winner, you're just saying, I, we just want to know you're serious and you're not some scam phone bidder trying to bid this thing up. So we're just going to hold this in a trust account we in hold. escrow. 
and then if you don't win, whoop, all back to you, right? So the unsuccessful bidder within three days of the auction close, business days, their money is returned to them either back onto their credit card or the wire transfer or sent back to them. Yeah. And uh, then at the end of the auction, the successful bidder and the seller, Jimmy, go to AIC Title Service. It's the third party we work with and that's where the bulk of the funds go. They'll escrow all the money, they'll do the title search, they'll file all the FAA documentation. Painless, easy, that's everything's done That's why digitally. you're here. Because the last thing I have is time dealing with an Elvis jet that I'm trying to get ready for Oshkosh. That's why I, he's like, hey, we take care of all of it and I don't have to answer a ton of emails or deal with the paperwork on the backside or the pictures and that. I'm like, where do I sign up? Done. It's so easy for you, Jimmy. And, you know, during that publication period, you know, people can vet the airplane. We're going to answer 95% of their questions because you're such a good data gathering here. The very few people that we can't answer the question, I will bring them to you only after they're vetted and they're under contract. So you know it's a serious buyer, not someone just wanting to talk to Jimmy about his beautiful silver 310. Yeah, that's fair. Because um, I will put them to work polishing it. That'll be the last time they ever come over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, something that we do different than a lot of other services is we uh, are very helpful. If you need a ferry pilot, if you need help finding insurance, anything like that, we're gonna help you do what needs to be done to close this deal out quickly. But we want 100% full disclosure on everything. And that's why this works. Actually, you know what? For the bidders, don't bid on it. Nobody bid on this airplane. And then that way, it, oh, it didn't sell. But it's like a one penny, no reserve auction. So as long as nobody registers, I'm gonna mess up the link in the description. That way when you click it, it'll go to some random like Teletubbies or something. That's the only way this airplane's <laughs> not gonna sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, well, you got logbooks to scan. Let's do it. And we still need to, Look at the engine. No, we do. Yeah, let's. All right, it so out. let's put this thing back in inside and let's pull that and check out the engine. Sounds good. All right. Let's make it happen. This is the first time since the last annual that I've taken the the hood off. Cool. Tight fit. There you go. Wow, that engine is clean. This is a really nice airplane, Jimmy. Inside and out. I know. Stop. Wow. It's painful enough. Well, yeah, I forgot what this thing looks like. Well, looks like a Lycoming IO360 engine. There you go. It does have the fluid dampener on the front. That's for a good thing. Vibration. Yep. That's also the reason that I we can't add any big power to this. Yeah. Is because the crankshaft is not a counterweighted crankshaft, and it's a solid crankshaft, so we can't put a constant speed prop on it. It'll have to be the MT electric prop. Oh, really? Yeah. But okay, so this is currently a fixed pitch prop. Yeah. Okay. And the, um, so the, the crankshaft, if we tried to put our high compression pistons and some of the other flow stuff to it, yeah. like we wanted to do, to put this thing way over 200 horsepower, the, uh, the scientists at Hartzell told me that it would induce too many harmonic vibrations, vibrations yep. and it would essentially just shake the airplane apart. 180 horsepower fixed pitch prop and it still does 200 knots. It's just, it's insane. Yeah. Oh yeah, so you can get the, uh, the like homing dual EIS mags. Yeah. We have a new um, lithium battery in it. Oh. And we have a lithium backup battery for this. Where is the lithium battery? There, it's at? all behind the seat. It's on this airplane. Yeah, you can't really see it. Remote oil filter makes it a lot easier for yeah. that. Well, remote oil filters are nice. Yeah. And I noticed the date on the uh, the oil filter. So yep. this only had, the oil that's in this only has 15 hours on it. Yep. So we'll go ahead and we'll do an oil change before delivery to make sure it's got fresh oil in it and a filter. Can't beat that. Yeah. My goal, what I wanted to do was get a speeding ticket. So you may not have known this, but under 10,000 feet, you can get a speeding ticket for going 250 knots or more. Under in a Bravo, you can get a speeding ticket for, is it 200 knots? I believe so, yeah. I think it's 200 knots and I could easily do that. that. Come on. Yeah, it would be a fine and probably a mark on your license for your pilot, but how cool is that to get a speeding ticket in an airplane? 
<laughs> in a four-cylinder airplane with no turbos and no fancy stuff on it. I would love to get that call from the FAA. Hey, we caught you going uh, 215 and a 200. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, I missed this. I'm, I already missed this airplane. Oh, okay, can we be done now? I'm sad now. Yeah. It's going off to a good new home, I'm sure. It better. Yeah. It better. Whoever buys this thing, you better love it. Now that we have the polish done and our vinyl done, we have to take it to TAS in Ohio, the world's number one twin Cessna shop, for them to look over this thing and make sure it is good to go for whoever gets this airplane. I am going to take you up and show you why I'm selling this airplane. Let's go. And our route is loaded and we got that there. Transponder is good, radio is good. Okay. Go ahead and pull back our engines. Plants and traffic ruins are Uncle Bravo. Is there anybody in the pattern plant city? Plant City Traffic 310, Echo Bravo's taxing Alpha to runway 28, Plant City. landing was a little bouncy, it went kind of like that, nothing unusual, however, when I took off and I went to go gear up, I flipped the switch oh, and things started go. moving, but the light never came on and I got a, a burning electric smell, so I looked and it still wasn't on, I looked over in the mirror or the reflection and I could see that the gear was still down a little bit, so I pulled the gear motor a breaker here to make sure I didn't burn anything up, catch on fire, that kind of thing. That's a bad day. And I decided I'm turning around. And I'm gonna have, uh, we're gonna try this back at Plant City and I'll have to do a manual gear extension and hopefully land and it not collapse and destroy this airplane because that would really suck. And unfortunately, I'm only going 115 knots right now, which is really slow, and it's gonna take me like three hours to get back. And this is why the flight after a maintenance flight is Atlanta, two, zero, one of the most dangerous. Plan is, when we get down here, we're gonna annually gear down. I hope I'm gonna get the green light, go two turns past it. And assuming that I do, I'm going to ver I'm going to have somebody on the ground. I'm going to fly over and verify that, in fact, I do have all the gears looked down and locked. And then, if they do, then I'll land. If they're not, then I guess we'll uh, try again, wiggle. You know, we'll shake the plane a little bit, see if we can loosen up whatever's holding it, and get it to uh, be able to go down for us. And if that still doesn't work, worst case scenario, well, we ruin a really, really nice airplane. But we'll do it the way training tells us. So that's going to suck. I'm not looking forward if that's actually the option. But we have a few things before we get to that point that, fingers crossed, uh, it'll, it'll work and we'll be able to make an uneventful landing. But as of right now, Here we go. Might as well eat my mid-flight snack since there's nothing to do but cruise along at 130 knots. And oh, don't want to, you know, potentially crash land with an empty stomach, so don't appetit. I will say that for the last two days I've had this small, still voice inside me just saying, do a gear swing before you take off. Do a gear swing before you take off to make sure that gear is good to go. 
because that's the one thing I did not do that uh, two other mechanics uh, worked on and I did not confirm and double check their work. So if I fly over and I get a visual and I can't get a for sure 100% gear down all locked, then I'm gonna go over to the Lakeland Airport that has a much, much bigger airport and they have all the services for fire truck and all that stuff. And I'm gonna land on that runway because it's like 10,000 feet long too and really wide. Hope we don't get there, but just in case. One, four, two, Bravo, Fox, That's my plan. And level 8, if for some reason I'm not able to make it, Evie, I love you very much. And it is truly the love of my life. Eilis, you're gonna grow up to be a wonderful young man. You already are. Bentley, little fire, use that fire for good. And Noah, full tilt Noah. You're gonna have lots of friends and you're gonna do a lot of big things in life. And I'll see you soon. And I figured I'd freshen up on the emergency procedure for the gear down. So we've got uh, before proceeding manually, check the landing gear circuit breaker with gear switch down. And if the circuit breaker needs to be reset, let it cool for three minutes before Checking again, if it's not tripped, flip the gear lever to the neutral position, not up, not down, but neutral. And then you gotta tilt the seat back. You gotta take the hand crank out of the little holder thing. And then you gotta crank it down without letting go of it, 50 turns. And then once the green light turns on, you go at least two more turns till it totally bottoms out and locks. And then you put the little crank handle back in its spot, and then you put your seat back, and then you land. And the annual gear extension on this airplane is only down. It will only crank down. You cannot crank it back up. So that's why I decided to turn and go the other way. One mile east of Ocala. Continue on your we are 26 minutes out. I went ahead and secured everything I can secure. I briefed my emergency procedures. And uh, now it's just a matter of working the plan. We plan the work, now it's time to work the plan. And cross our fingers. And plan city traffic, I see in the pattern, I'm behind you a ways, so you'll be clearing around by the time I get there. Plan city. Yeah, we're just doing laps in the pattern here, and we'll, uh, we'll be looking out for you as well. And just off that note, plan city traffic, 76 use on final 10, touch and go plan city. All right, there is traffic right in front of me doing some pattern work at the same altitude, so I gotta go around them. Then I gotta come in this way and turn. I see the the first water tower, and there is a second water tower at the airport. So let's stay clear of that. We gotta get down to 1,500, bring my power down nice and slow. Mixtures are up, boost pumps are on. We're on our main fuel tanks. And we are down to 1,900 feet for 1,500 feet. Nice. 500 feet a minute. Still well above blue line. That's good. One thing about it, with the gear down like that, uh, the most we could get was 125, 130 miles an hour on an ESAM, but I can't go any faster than that because that's our gear speed, Captain, and I don't want to cause any damage. Uniform is turning left crosswind over the one zero Pan City. Plant City traffic, twin Cessna, 310 Echo Bravos on about a four mile base for runway 10 to overfly, Plant City. Uh, Plant City Unicom, can you confirm you are available with binoculars to look at the airplane, please? Negative on the binoculars, but I am right here. Roger that. I'll be over flying at about 1,000 feet and I'll uh, keep it as slow as I can safely. Plant City. Plant City traffic, uh, 310 Echo Bravo is on left base for runway 10 and turning final runway 10, Plant City. Echo Bravo, 762 is looking at your gear too. Um, once you're a little closer, we'll have a visual. Hey, Fernando, appreciate it. And we're heading down to 281 Bravo Lima, left downwind, runway 5, we're heading. 762 all set, pipeline in sight, no factor. 
Plants in the Unicom 310 Echo Bravo. Currently, my gear is partially down, but I will uh, be look going around. I'm just, I'm going to try to do a manual gear extension, and then uh, if I can get a green, come in and land. Plant City. Plant City 5534 Echo, we're just northwest. We've got the final track. Okay, so let's get into a downwind, and then I got to crank this thing all the way down. No problem. Plant City traffic, 76 uniform, final 10 pipeline in sight. Plant City. Final on the way, one zero on the one zero. Second, and the gear is uh, out. And I gotta crank like crazy and make sure I don't get slow. Final full stop taxi back, Plant City. Oh golly, something just came unstuck. Oh golly, go that is hard to do. Okay, I've got a green, and it went as far as it could over the road. We got the airport in sight. Green is down. Up the traffic, shot 5181 Echo with five to the. We're gonna land to like normal. Right now, we're on All right, pumps check, gas. Those pumps are on. Gas is in the right thing. So all right, undercarriage, I think, is down and locked. We got mixtures are up, props are up. Bring our power, kind of get that settled in. There we go. We got our wind is already checked. We got a direct crosswind. That's fun. Not too bad though. Hopefully the gear doesn't collapse on landing. That is a very known norm, not normal, but it's a common issue in all of these three and 400 Cessnas in these early years with the mechanical gear is if they're not rigged absolutely correctly, then this happens. So there you go. Plant City traffic, 310 Echo Bravo, turning left base, runway 10, Plant City. All right, 900, good, coming down, good. Go ahead and introduce a little bit of flap. 15, pitch that nose up. City traffic, Skyhawk 1476 Uniform is turning left downwind, runway 10, Plant City. Plant City traffic, 310 Echo Bravo, turning final, 10, Plant City. Echo traffic, R278, Juliet Alpha, is running the bottom to the south of Popka. All right, let's go ahead and slow it down a little more with just a smidge more flat. Uh, uh, traffic, Scott 5181, it goes on the 45, right down and runway 1, pop, pop this. We'll go 30, and we need to pitch, keep it above blue Tampa line until we Scott get five, air. Turning left, crosswind, runway 32, Tampa North. All right, power's there. Plant City traffic, 76 uniform is left down, 110, we're just going to be extending out here. Plant City. All right, here we go. Plant City traffic, 310 Echo Bravo, short final, 1-0, Plant City, fingers crossed. Look down the runway. are good and let's keep it straight and this thing feels like it's all whirly Plant City 76 left base one zero one two all right mixtures back for lean fuel pumps are off so far we're still up on the on the wheels we're gonna be very gentle as we make this turn Plant City traffic, 310 Echo Bravo, clear of war runway 10, Plant City. Woohoo! Oh man, I gotta pee.